Uh, hello everyone, how are you doing? The season is upon us. This is my video where I'm going to give you my predictions on where I think we'll end up at the end of the season. But first, before I do that, I feel I must level with you guys. Um, there's a reason why I've been quite shady this year. Uh, hadn't even didn't even get to training camp not one day. Uh, I've been a, a little aloof. I went on vacation and the the prime of preseason, the things like that. Like, what is up with Shango? Well, this is up. Yes, Shango's about to be a father. You've got the scoop. No one knows this. It hadn't been released with the press or anything with 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 my wife, or whatever. But she gave me to go ahead and tell to tell you that yes. I'm about to be a father. There's a little girl inside of Shinola Hampton, but don't tell anyone. And if you're a fan of Shameless, that should give you a hint on what might happen next season. So, shh. All right, so that's what's been going on with me. It's just been a complete focus change, focusing on the baby, focusing on other things to bring things for the baby and all that kind of stuff. So that has been my problem. Faith, family, football. All right, now let me get into the season. Um, oh, I, as I said before, I have been in wait and see mode this year. And as much as I've been up and down through the preseason on how, oh, we look good. Oh, we don't look so good. Oh, we just got signed Brian Waters, which we signed yesterday. I'm going to get into that. All this stuff that's going back and forth, I'm still firmly firmly in wait and see mode not half not a little bit firmly in wait and see mode just because a I've been burned by the cowboy hack machine just way too much way too much almost every not almost every year that I've done these videos I've been burned by the cowboy hack machine no more show me now just show me I'm not gonna get jump up and down oh yeah we got a new because every year somebody gets kicked out of Dallas we get a new something and we say all our problems are gone because we have a new fill in the blank. This year we have a new defensive coordinator and we have a new play caller. Oh, everything's going to be wonderful. But in my opinion, the players are the ones who make the plays and the players are the ones who are doing everything. So as long as we have that same core, there's a good chance that we have the same results. That's just the way I look at it. Um, let's look at the offense, offensive side of the ball. We have a new play caller. Um, do I think it's going to help? Maybe a little bit, but not too much more because I think it was more with Garrett. I think it was more of the execution of the plays. If the execution gets better, then the play calling is going to look a lot better. But if the, the execution is the same, the play calling is going to appear to be just as bad. So if the, if the execution is better, if the blocking is better, if the Tony Romo's reads are better, then everything will look good on on that in, uh, on that in, uh, on that inspection as far as our offense a lot of people are saying you know we're going to be a top 5 offense we're going to be this we're going to be that blah 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 my view of the offense is a tad different than a lot of other people uh if you just look at the stats you will see one offense you will see a potentially powerhouse offense if you just look at the stats if you look at the games you will see chunks of yards being obtained in certain moments chunks of yards being obtained at the end of football games uh, when we're trying to come back feverishly and things of that sort but you will see in every single game our offense struggling especially at the beginning so I don't think it's a well-oiled machine and if those of you who saw the 90s Cowboys with with Emmett and, and Michael Irvin and Troy Eggman that was a well-oiled machine in offense it grinded on you. It had a purpose. It was going to go into the football game. You knew what they were going to do to you. They were going to run football. They were going to hit Irvin on ten yard curls, and they were going to hit Nova Check down down the seams. And that was it. You know, if you could stop that, then you could beat it. But the thing is, you couldn't stop it. So that was an offense. Our offense now is 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 just at the end of the football games when we get you know erratic. When Tony Romo gets back there and just starts slinging the ball around, then good things usually happen from it sometimes we come up a little short sometimes we win but that's the way that's the way it, it flows so um that's my view of the offense the defense it's all about the defensive line to me without i was losing my mind when we didn't have uh 
when we didn't get a defensive lineman in the draft. Uh, Ratliff, I never, I, I, I'm a big fan of Ratliff and the heart and the fight that's in this guy. But I just thought we beat him to death. And if you know my videos from way back, you saw me saying, Ratliff's getting beat up there at the end of the nose tackle of a 3-4. Ratliff does not belong in a nose tackle of a 3-4. He's getting beat up there. There's physics at hand here other than just the will to fight. You know, Ratliff wants to play that position. I don't care what Rat wanted. He was getting beat up, and now his body is pretty much done for. So hopefully we can get a little bit out of, out of him. Hopefully Hatcher can be better than he has been in his entire career, which he looks like he is. You know, I'm a, I've always been a big fan of, of, of Hatcher. So... Um, but beyond that, we have really nobody, man. You can't get me to believe in Nick Hayden after four years in the league is going to be a, a super starter or a, a somebody that's going to stuff the run and stuff like that. I mean, hopefully it happens. I'm a big fan of Ben Bass, though. I'm, I'm very eager to see what Ben Bass is going to bring. But still, on the backups with the defensive end, if, if Spencer or, or Ware gets hurt, we have no heat coming from anyone else. Um, the linebacker core is phenomenal the bruce lee combo i cannot wait to see but if one or two of them goes down again we have we have a problem and the, the secondary uh, uh of course our corners are studs but then in the middle of the football field our safeties i just don't i mean it's still as weak as ever it has potential jj wilcox looks like he has potential out of his mind but still right now it still looks like it's the whole of the defense so there's still issues on defense. We're still built upon if we lose a couple of players, we're done for, you know, so then we can blame injuries for our bad season again. And, and injuries should not be blamed. You should count on having injuries because it happens every year to almost every team. I mean, if any team that goes through the year without injury, that, that's a fortunate, very fortunate year. So your team should be deep enough to handle that. So with all this being said, this team is... It, this is going to be the most PC answer you've ever heard out of me. This team can go 11 and 5 or 5 and 11. I do not know. It will probably fall somewhere in between. We will not we will be in every single game this year. We will be right there at the end and either it's going to be something that happens bad and we lose the game or something happens good and we win the game. But and, and I'm not I don't care if we're playing the Green Bay Packers or the San Francisco 49ers or we're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars or Tennessee Titans. It don't matter what the opponent level is. We're going to be in every football game this year, same as last year. Where do I think we end up? I think Washington is the team to beat in the NFC East. Then will be us. Then possibly Philadelphia. Then I have no faith in the Giants this year at all. So... Washington, and the reason why I believe in Washington is because not because of RG3. It's because of their run game and that running offense. I don't think that's a gimmick college offense. There's a, there's a guy running that offense, Mike Shanahan, that has won Super Bowls with that same scheme. So that's why I believe in the Washington Redskins and, and what they're doing. We, and we're going to have to do something on our defensive line to be able to stop that Alfred Morris and that running game that's in Washington. And then, on top, then you sprinkle RG3 on top of that. So we have to be Washington. Game one of the season versus the Giants, we're going to beat the Giants. I, just, I, I, I have less faith in the Giants than anyone else in the NFC East. Who, uh, maybe they proved me wrong. I hope not. But I think we beat the Giants and we start off this season on a good step. The Brian Waters acquisition, I don't know how, how much he has left. But if he has a good amount of football left in him, he's going to be an upgrade to our offensive line. His experience putting him aside Frederick is going to be absolutely invaluable. So there's a lot of good things from this Brian Water signing. Will it be the catalyst that takes us into the playoffs? I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be that much of an um, improvement, but it's not, going to, it's not going to make us worse. Period. It's just not. So um, that's how that's how we, I'm looking at everything. So I will make another video right after the game as normal. And the season has started, ladies and gentlemen. And again, Shango is going to be a father. Love it. All right. I'll let you. Peace.